there. The Lakers play at the Barclays Center on Friday against the Nets. On to another struggling team after getting off to a 3-5 and five start. Including the team's first three-game losing streak since 2011, the Indianapolis Colts have fired offensive coordinator Pep Hamilton. Colts head coach Chuck Pagano released the following statement. Through the first eight weeks of the season, we have felt our offense hasn't performed at the consistent level that we need. Because of this, we've decided to go in a different direction and relieve Pep Hamilton of his duties as offensive coordinator. As head coach of this team, it's my responsibility to make sure I'm doing everything we can to put us in the best position to succeed. We thank Pep for his service to the team and wish him all the best. Rob Chazinski will assume the role of offensive coordinator in Indianapolis. Skip. Did Pep deserve to be mm. fired? Molly, Stephen A., this was so, so wrong. When I heard yesterday afternoon that Pep Hamilton had been fired, I needed Pepto-Bismol because I was sick at my stomach. That's how bad this was. This was so classic. Heaven forbid that anyone needs to blame Andrew Luck for his 1-5 record as a starter and for his... NFL leading 11 interceptions that he has thrown in only six out of their eight games. And for his QBR that has plummeted all the way to 30th in the National Football League. Heaven forbid you blame him. Point any fingers at Andrew Luck, the franchise quarterback. Andrew Luck, as I call him. First ballot, Luck Hall of Famer. No, somebody else has to take the fall. Somebody else has to be the midseason scapegoat. Hey, how about let's fire Pep? Yeah, let's, let's blame him. Blame Pep Hamilton. And for those who don't know, Pep Hamilton is a sharp, young, rising African-American coach. He was a quarterback at Howard, a coach at Howard. He's been around the National Football League. He was actually Andrew Luck's coordinator at Stanford for a year. And this man is fast-tracking, I thought, silly me, because I've, I've talked to so many people who have such high regard for Pep Hamilton. Stephen A., I thought he was fast-tracking to become a head coach in the National Football League. That's right. You ought to talk to Herman Edwards, our coach Herm, about Pep Hamilton. Just swears by him, raves about him. And this man just got fired over Andrew, are, are you kidding me? Uh, we, we get this, the Colts have to do everything in their power to prop up this franchise quarterback, Andrew Luck, as he begins to free fall through his career. His, obviously his QBR has fallen each year that he's been in the league. But for Pep Hamilton to take the fall, it, it just made me sick, Stephen A., your thoughts. Well, it makes me sick, too, and obviously I'm not going to absolve Andrew Luck. He is leading the league with interceptions. Actually, the number is 12, Skip, not 11. He's thrown 12 interceptions. You actually were kind to mm. him. He's been worse than what you even did. You, you, go ahead. You, 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 12 turnovers. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Here's the deal. The fact of the matter is, is that, Skip, I'm all, the only thing that I would challenge you on is I ain't stopping at Andrew Luck. How about Chuck Pagano? You're the head coach. You wanted Chadzinski all along. That's yep. who you wanted. We know he had an offensive coordinator pedigree, you know, before he got the Cleveland job, and that didn't work out and what have you. But we know that he was an offensive coordinator in Carolina. That's your friend. That's the guy you wanted. Pep Hamilton, in fairness to Pagano, was forced on, on Pagano because Grigson, Grig, Grigson yep. had kept him on board, kept Pep Hamilton on board, and Pagano had never wanted him to begin with. So once Chadzinski was available, Pagano brought him on board, and it was just, the, you know, a move in the making. It was a foregone conclusion that this was going to happen. But the interesting part about it is you do it at this juncture because you're trying to point the finger of blame for this team struggles. The 29th ranked defense, doesn't the head coach Chuck Pagano have something to do with that? Yeah. I think he does. You understand? So it's interesting that you would sit there and fire him but not fire yourself. Then we get to Grigson. I mean, he's the real culprit in all of this. This is the same dude that sat up there and gave up a first round pick to Cleveland to get his hands on Trent Richardson, yep. who the Oakland Raiders just this offseason paid $600,000 to to disappear. That's the same guy that Grigson gave up a first-round pick for. Harriman's, who is on the bench now, is the is, is the find in the offseason for the offensive line. You will also start somebody named Lance Lewis at the beginning of the season. So you failed to protect Andrew Luck. You didn't give him a running game to speak of, really, okay? You're sitting up there and absorbing 
absolving yourself from it and you allow Pagano to get rid of Pep Hamilton. This is some disgusting stuff that's going on here. This was this dude was on a fast track to becoming a head coach and now he's out of a job because of Pagano and Grigson, especially Grigson, who, by the way, some players are walking around saying he think he invented the game of football, that he knows more than everybody else, that nobody can tell him anything. It's just unbelievable. The same guy that you know has some responsibility in diming the New England Patriots out with the whole deflate gate scandal. Yep. It seems to me that Grigson is willing to point the finger at everybody but Grigson when it comes to the struggles of the Indianapolis Colts. But karma works in mysterious ways. You know, and sometimes it's not that mysterious. Sometimes it's preordained what will transpire because of your actions. Mm. And you mark my words, Grigson will be lucky to have a job at the end of the season. So will Pagano, because when you make moves like this, which are clearly Bush League, weak, pathetic, as far as I'm concerned, it ends up coming back to bite you too. This was a real weak move on the part of Grigson, more so than Pagano, because Pagano wanted his guy. But it's still weak to throw Pep Hamilton to Wolves like that. And Pep Hamilton wasn't perfect. There were some times he threw when he should have ran. There were some times he ran when he should have thrown. There were a lot of times when, when Andrew Luck came to, came to save the day, you know, with some heroics, at least in the past, not this past season, but at least in the past. But in the end, what this comes down to is that they tried to find a scapegoat to gloss over their own ineptitude. We're not buying it. Chuck Pagano, Ryan Grigson, more so than Chuck Pagano, America knows who the real problems are with mm. the Indianapolis Colts. And it wasn't Pep Hamilton. We'll find that out soon enough. Mm. I hear you about Grigson. I hear you about Pagano. I tried to tell you last week that karma was operating here, that what goes around has come back around on the whistleblowing Colts over Deflate Gate. But I'm still here. I'm going to stand my ground and say you're still giving Andrew Luck too much of a pass here. Everyone is trying to protect Andrew Luck. So many people who said he's going to be a superstar and a cinch Hall of Famer before his draft before the RG3 luck draft, they're how, digging how, in and but, trying but, but to point I, the fingers at... How am I trying to protect him? Okay, look... He's not, he's not he, the one that fired Pep Hamilton? Okay, but he is not blameless here. And I have to believe that he wanted Pep Hamilton. I, I, I don't know. Well, why didn't he stand up and fight for Pep Hamilton? You would think, as the franchise quarterback, he could take a stand and say, no, that's wrong. You cannot fire my guy, Pep. I'm sorry. Andrew, Andrew Luck is in no position to fight anybody at this particular moment in time because those turnovers are not about play calling most of the time. They're overthrows, they're underthrows, he's fumbling the ball. Everywhere you turn, Andrew Luck is turning the football over. That's not on an offensive coordinator, and Andrew Luck knows that. So when you make those kind of mistakes, you are in no position to flex and talk about what you want and what you need to be successful when you had it in place and you didn't operate accordingly. A matter of fact, they're probably thankful Andrew Luck performed the way that he performed because it gave Pagano the opening to get rid of the offensive coordinator. And that's what this really comes down to. Okay. So nobody's trying to absolve so, Andrew Luck. Last Andrew question. Andrew Luck is right. not playing good football. Are, are you trying to tell me that Andrew Luck does not have enough clout to save Pep's job? Andrew Luck, who still hasn't no, signed the exactly big deal yet. You know, he still exactly he hasn't gotten a big franchise. Boy, that's exactly what I'm saying. Come on. That, and I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that cachet. Because if you're Pagano and you're Grigson and the, there's the potential there for you to be on your way out, then all bets are off. And you're going to roll the dice and take whatever chances you need to take because you have absolutely nothing to lose the way that things are going. If you're winning and you make those kind of changes, it could be problematic. But if you're losing and you're nose diving and dysfunctionality is raining all over your franchise, then you have absolutely nothing to lose. And when you have nothing to lose, the quarterback can't do anything about that because you have nothing to lose anyway because you believe you're on your way out. Mm. I just wish the Colts played in a real division where they had mm. something to lose because they, they can't lose for winning or win for losing yep. right now. They're still in it.
Yeah. But so is Everett. Jacksonville's yeah. still in it, I guess. It appears, Pep Hamilton, yeah. just the first casualty there with the reeling Colts. We might see more happen after they face the Broncos in that you bye will. week. And both Skip and Stephen A. clearly do not think it was deserved. On to another team with quarterback struggles. The Cowboys are winless without Tony Romo. Will they get back on track against the Eagles, though, on Sunday? And on this good hump day, we have lots of topics to be tackled by Stephen A. and Skip. Don't miss a beat by checking out our complete rundown, which you can find on Instagram right now.